All right. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Denzel Mensa, and I was born and raised in the Bronx, in New York. Now, that is also my excuse for not having a license right now, but I do have a permit. <laughs> so, for those of us who do not have a license, which I'm pretty much probably the only one in here, we have to take public transportation. And in New York, there's a lot of people who have too much dignity to chase after buses. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. So today I'm going to be telling you guys a story about a time I chased after a bus. I remember it literally as if it was a few months ago because it was actually a few months ago. <laughs> I was running out of, I was actually walking out of my building and I saw the bus across the street at the bus stop already. And I'm rushing to church so I'm like, shoot. So I'm thinking on my feet and I just start running and I know I cannot catch the bus at that bus stop. So I start running to have to take all these little turns to try and intercept it at the next bus stop instead. As I'm running over there, I'm like about three fourths of the way there and my mind starts talking to me. You're not gonna make it. You're about to collapse. Just stop, wait for the next bus. And I started listening to my mind actually, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, yeah, Logically, I'm really tired. I'm not gonna make it. The bus is probably already there. I'm just running for no reason. I have my little briefcase with me. I'm not gonna make it. But something strange started to happen. Although my mind was telling me all of this, my body kept on going. My mind still kept on telling me, Denzel, just stop. You're about to collapse. You're not gonna die. All this crazy stuff. Eventually, I ended up making it on the bus. Next thing you know, I'm sitting down, and I don't know how many of you have Dr. Beavers, but she talks about metacognition, which is pretty much looking at the pattern of your mind and retracing your thought process. I practiced that a lot, even before I knew that it was an actual thing, and I thought, you know, a lot of other people did it until I found out, like, oh, no, I'm just one of those people who actually practiced it. But, so I sat down on the bus, and I did this metacognitive type of thing, observing my thoughts, like, wow. My mind was telling me that I couldn't make it on this bus, but my body wasn't listening to my mind. I wonder how applicable this is to other areas in my life. You see, I like this show called, well actually I like the book series, the series from Fortune Events. And my favorite um, character from there, there's actually a new Netflix show on it, you guys should check it out. My favorite <coughs> character is Klaus Baudelaire, he's a book nerd, and he quoted Samuel Beckett one time basically saying, can't go on. I'll go on. <laughs> now that doesn't really make sense. And to our minds, which are logical, you know, our minds are often trying to make sense of things, but sometimes our bodies doesn't need to have to make sense, pretty much. I'll end it off with a story about a frog, two frogs actually, who fell into a deep well. So there were two frogs walking, I believe, hopping possibly, and they fell into a deep well. A whole bunch of other frogs from the city or town, wherever wells are located, came around and they were like, oh my gosh, they're goners. They're not gonna make it. Both of the frogs in the deep well started to panic, started trying to hop up. Now the other town frogs started yelling down, you guys won't make it, just stop. Just, just, just wait to die, you won't make it out. So one of the frogs ended up actually listening to those people who love frogs, ended up quitting, and it died. The last frog still kept on trying to jump up and hop up. All the other townspeople, oh my gosh, Joe, stop, you won't make it, quit, just give up. Joe still kept on hopping. We're gonna go with your name. You know, okay, his. cool that. <laughs> Joe still kept on hopping. Oh my gosh, Joe, we're trying to get you to stop. Stop, don't do it. You're gonna kill yourself, you're gonna collapse. All of that. Joe still kept on hopping. Eventually, Joe managed to hop up and out of the well and made it out. When all the town's frogs came around Joe, like, oh my gosh, how did you make it out? Like, we were trying to tell you to stop. Why weren't you listening? Joe, now being close enough to read their lips, said, oh, I'm actually deaf. <laughs> so the whole time while y'all are telling me, you can't make it, stop. I thought y'all were cheering for me. <laughs> There's many things that we can learn from that story. The one thing that I would go off and say is that 
Sometimes people will try and tell you things, like you can't do it. Sometimes your own mind will even tell you that you can't do something. But, and sometimes they'll be right, actually. But there's times where you have to ignore logic. <laughs> there's times you have to ignore people, and you just have to go with what you believe is actually right. Because believe it or not, some things are best done mindlessly, and some things can only be done mindlessly. Thank you for listening. Does anyone have <coughs> any questions or comments? Did you make the bus? Yes, I did make it to the bus. What's <laughs> up, Joe? Did you originally have a different name for the frog that you named me after? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, no. I didn't have a name for the frogs at all. Okay, you're just kind of going with it. Yep. Okay, that's <laughs> Where'd you get the story from? Um, I actually heard Tony Evans, he's a great pastor. Um, he told the story about the frogs. Um, uh, he didn't tell it in the exact same way that I did, but um, yeah, it was the way that I remembered it. But the whole point that I remembered was that the frogs fell into a hole or some type of ditch. One of them died, and everyone was telling him, you can't make it, you can't make it, and the frog ended up coming up, and he was deaf. And he was like, oh, and so that was like pretty much the main 